Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's solve a few problems related to areas. I have uh, seven problems which I'm planning to, to discuss today. So uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you have already spent some time looking at these problems. Well, if you don't, please do it now before, before you listen to this lecture and try to solve these problems yourself uh, as best as you can. And after the lecture is completed, try to do it again just on your own, uh, solving these problems, just to make sure that you remember this. And you know, next time when the new problems will arrive, you will remember the techniques maybe to use. The whole purpose of solving problems is not really to remember how to solve these problems, but to prepare yourself to, to solve the problems which you never saw before. That, that, that's what creativity is all about, right? All right, so let's solve these problems. Problem number one. Um, if you have a triangle which is the right triangle and you draw an altitude towards hypotenuse, then these two uh, segments are related to each other as squares of the corresponding cachety. <coughs> All right. Actually, that's quite easy. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's all related to similarity of, uh, of the triangles because obviously since this is the right triangle and these two small triangles are right as well and they share these angles uh, with, the, with the big triangle. So the small triangle is um, similar to the big one and another small triangle is similar to the big one because the angles acute angles are the same, right? So, from the similarity, uh, we can build a uh, certain relationship. Let's say, let's consider this particular triangle, the small one. So, it's smaller, catechus x relates to its hypotenuse a, uh, as in the big triangle, the catechus which uh, lies against the same its A relates to the entire hypotenuse which is C. Now similarly from similarity of this triangle we can take the cachetus Y relates to its hypotenuse B as um, let me just mark the same angles that would be better. So Y lies across the uh, single arc angle. So in the big triangle, the catheters which lies against the single arc triangle uh, angle is B to its hypotenuse from which we can derive that x is equal to a squared divided by c, y is equal to b squared divided by c, and if we will divide one by another, c will be reduced basically and you will have a squared divided by b squared. So from these two follows this one. All right? All right, that's the first problem. That's easy. Next, you have a square and you have to construct another square so that the area of the first one relates to the area of the second one as 
m over n, where m and n are a given number. So m and n are a given number, and this square, the square number 1, is given. So we have to find, we have to construct the square number 2, which has the area proportionally to this one, using the, this uh, ratio of, of proportionality. Well, before actually to address this, I would like to make one, one very, very simple uh, construction, and we will use it in some other cases as well. Uh, now, if you have number m, how to construct the uh, segment which has the lengths equal to m? Well, that's easy. You have the unit segment and you attach it to, it, to, to, to itself m times. Now, the, the interesting question is how to construct a segment which has the length square root of m. Well, here is what I uh, suggest. Remember, <coughs> remember this theorem that if this is h, this is x, and this is y, and this is the right triangle. So again, as in the previous problem, all uh, triangles, small, two small ones and the big ones, they are similar, from which we can uh, say that, okay, considering this is similar to this, these two small triangles, we can say that catchet, smaller catchet, catchetus x to a bigger h in this triangle is the same proportional as smaller to the bigger in in this triangle, from which you see that h squared is equal to x times y. This is something which we have already uh, spoken about many different times, at many different occasions. We had the square of the, uh, of the altitude from, uh, from the right angle towards hypotenuse uh, is equal to the product of two uh, segments uh, which this altitude divides the hypotenuse into. From this, we can very easily derive this. How? Well, let x is equal to m and y is equal to 1. Then what is h? h squared is equal to m times 1, which is m. So h is equal to square root of n. So if you would like to construct this segment, all you need to do is you have to construct uh, the right triangle in such a way that uh, the altitude divides the hypotenuse in m, 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 m over uh, 1 uh, ratio. So to, to construct it, you have to do very, uh, very easy thing. You do first. hypotenuse, which is equal to m plus 1, right? So it would be, this is the hypotenuse. This is m, and this is 1. Now, how to find um, the vertex of the right angle? Well, very easily, you draw a circle, right, here. That's the locus of all the different vertices from which this hypotenuse is viewed at 90 degree angle, right? So all these angles are 90 degree because they all are supported by the diameter. But if you will construct the perpendicular, then this particular point would not only be the vertex of the right triangle, but also the one from which, from, from, from which the altitude would actually hit this particular point, leaving m units on the left and one unit on the right. Then this particular length is square root of m. So we know how to construct square root of m. And I'm no longer be talking about this when I will use it in different problems. Now, that's exactly what I will do here. Because if this is a and this is x, 
the area 1 is equal a square, area 2 is equal to x square, and it's supposed to be equal to m over n. Or a over x is equal to square root of n divided by square root of n. Now, we know what square root of m is and square root of n is because we know m and n, and I have just explained how to construct square root of n. So, I know the lengths of these two, so let's just use different letters, let's say p and q. So, we know these are known, I mean, not known, but very easily constructible uh, segments. So, a, p, and q uh, are, are segments which we no, we, we can use them. So all we have to do is basically to construct the proportional to these two uh, things, which is very, very easy. And again, we did it many times before. <clears throat> I'll just repeat it once. So if you have a over x is equal to p over q, where a, p, and q are known segments, well, that's basically very easy. I mean, you can, for instance, you can do it this way. Um, you can have uh, a, p, q, parallel lines, and that would be your x. So you put a, p, and q, parallel lines, and you will have this piece will be x. How to prove it? Well, it's similarity and uh, it, it, it's, it's trivial, actually. I don't want to spend time on this. All right. We did it before when we were talking about similar triangles. Next one. All right, so you have two triangles which share one angle. Let's put it this way. This is one triangle. This is another triangle, and they have the same angle. Everything else is different. All right? So, what I have to prove is x, a, b, c, d. Okay, what I have to prove that. Um, so, triangle uh, x, a, c has area, let's call it A1, and area of triangle XBD will be A2. Now, the theorem says I have to prove that A1 over A2, so the ratio of the, of the areas, is um, equal to uh, the ratio of products of the sides which form this particular angle. So A1, so it's XA times XC. In this triangle, in the small triangle, XA and XC are forming this common angle. And in the big triangle is XB times X, G. That's what I have to prove. Now, well, the obvious way to solve this problem is let's just draw a couple of altitudes. And what we have is A1 is equal to what? This is uh, X, C times the altitude, let's call it M and N, times AM, right? And A2 is equal to the base, XG, times altitude, uh, BN. Well, actually, in both cases, I'm wrong. I have to divide it by 2. So in order to... Uh, to save some space on the board, instead of dividing by 2, I doubled the, the area. Because it's a triangle, so it's half of the product of the base times altitude, or this base times this altitude. So double area is equal to the product of the base and the altitude. 
All right. <coughs> now, we do have these altitudes, right? Because in this, we don't have altitude. We have uh, sides. But let's think about it. AM and BM. If you consider these two triangles, XAM and XBM, they're both right triangles, right? Because these are altitudes. So these are right angles, which share the angles which means that they are similar. And the similarity actually says that the ratio of these two cateti is the same as ratio as these two cateters or these two hypotenuses, right? So in this particular case, I need the hypotenuses. So let's divide this by this. What do we have? We have 2A1 divided by 2A2. Now, actually, 2 can be reduced. We don't really need this. It's equal to xc times am divided by xd times bn equals xc divided by xd times am divided by bn. Now, this is proportionality between these two cateters of these two right triangles. And as I was saying, they are proportional to the corresponding hypotenuse. So I can rewrite it as xc, xd times, instead of am to bn, I can put xa uh, over xb. And that's exactly what we have to prove. a1 to a2 as xa, xc, and xb, xd. That's exactly what's necessary to prove. That's it. OK, what's next? Similar triangles have areas proportional to their sides. All right, so you have similar triangles. So all angles are the same. All sides are proportional. Now we have to prove that the area of one divided by the area of another is like, let's say this is A, this is A prime, A square divided by A prime square. You know what, let's do it better. Let's call it A1 and A2, A1 divided by A2 square. Okay. Now, how can we prove it? Well, quite elementary, actually. Um, uh, obviously, in, in the similar triangles, everything is proportional. I mean, everything can I mean any linear element, for instance, obviously, altitudes. <coughs> so, if you will do this, for instance, or any other altitude, um, H1, H2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Now, obviously, we know that A1 over e A2 is the same as B1 over B2 and, uh, and C1 over C2. Now, what I'm actually uh, telling is that it's the same as H1 to H2. Now, how can, that, how can that be proven? Well, very easily, because not only the big triangles are proportional, are similar to each other and elements are proportional, but also this part, for instance. This right triangle is obviously similar to this right triangle. Uh, why? Well, because the angle is the same, right? Uh, and since these are right triangles, the triangles are similar. If they are similar, then their hypotenuses, for instance, are 
in the same ratio as their casualty. And this is the casualties right now, right? So H1 to H2 as B1 to B2. That's how it can be proved. Now, having this, I obviously can derive this. How? Well, very easily. Let's just wipe out this piece and just use this. Now, what is area one? Area one is C1 times H1 divided by two. A2 is C2 times H2 divided by two. So their ratio Their ratio, A1 over A2, is equal to C1, H1, to C1, C2, H2, right? Two will be reduced. But again, C1 to C2 is the same as A1 to A2. And H1 to H2 is also the same as A1 to A2. Here you have A1 square and A2 square. That's exactly what's necessary to prove. So all is following from proportionality of any linear element. Medians will have exactly the same ratio. Uh, bisectors will have exactly the same ratio. Uh, radius of inscribed circle here and here will have exactly the same ratio. Radius of uh, circumscribed circle will have the same ratio. So if two triangles are similar, everything, every linear element will uh, will be proportional, in, and the proportionality will be exactly the same. If you remember, I have defined similarity uh, from scaling. So this is scaling, and all elements are scaled. Now, all area-related elements are scaled, so to speak, twice, which means we are supposed to use the squares, like a square uh, or area of this, for instance, will also be proportional to the square of any linear element. I can say that, for instance, the area of this relates to the area of this as this square of this uh, altitude to, to, to square of that altitude. So areas are proportional to the squares of linear um, uh, elements. Okay. <coughs> So again, all these uh, similarity-related uh, problems, they all derive from the principle of similarity, which is based in scalability. Next. Um, well, next is exactly the same thing, but not for triangles. If you have two... Uh, similar polygons. Something like this. Then again, their areas are proportional to a square of ratio of linear elements. So if this is A1 and this is A2 and A1 squared to A2 squared is what the ratio of, the, of their areas. Now, how to prove that? Well, there are probably more than one, definitely there are more than one ways to prove it, but if you consider, for instance, um, you can always divide uh, any uh, polygon in, in triangles, and since every element uh, every triangle as, as part of this polygon, which is similar to this polygon, would also be similar to the corresponding triangles. And every triangle uh, has the same ratio of, uh, every pair of triangles has the same ratio of their areas as the square of, of the sides, of the corresponding sides. And the ratio of corresponding sides is exactly the same everywhere. So if this is B1, B2, then B1 to B2 is exactly the same ratio as A1 to A2, because again, these are similar 
uh, geometrical figures, which means everything is related to a scaling, the same scaling factor. So that's why basically <coughs> the ratio of the areas would be uh, a square of the ratio of any linear element. That's it. Um, now, if you have some particular case of the polygons, then, um, for instance, you have the regular polygon. And you can inscribe a circle. Then, again, if you will scale it, if you will have a similar regular polygon, then, as I was saying, all elements um, will be scaled by the same scaling factor. Now, including, obviously, the radius of, of the inscribed circle. So if you have this, for instance, uh, this is the center of the reg uh, regular polygon. So you can very easily uh, prove that this particular one, if you have a similar, well, forgive me for not being precise. So if this is a similar polygon to this, and then you have the corresponding triangle, which is similar to this one, that's very easy to prove then that the radius of the inscribed circle is also proportional using exactly the same scaling factor. It can be proven by many different things, but including, for instance, the similarity of the triangles and the similarity of uh, altitudes, for instance, which we were just proving before. So that's why the ratio of the sides is exactly the same as ratio of the inscribed circles. And therefore, what we can say is that if you have two regular polygons similar to each other, and for similarity, by the way, it's sufficient just to have the same number of sides, the same number of vertices. vertices. We did prove this theorem before. So if you have two similar regular polygons, then their areas is proportional to a square of inscribed, of the radius of inscribed circle, which is the same thing as the radius and the ratio of square of radiuses of circumscribed circles, which is the same as ratio of squares of corresponding sides, etc. I mean, all linear elements in in the similarity case are proportional with the same. Uh, 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 ratio of proportionality, which is the scaling factor. Okay, I have the last problem to explain. Now, here is the problem. If you have a triangle, what I'm asking you is to divide it line by using the lines parallel to, uh, to the base in a certain number of parts equal in area. So the area of this trapezoid is the same as area of this, same area as this, same area as the top triangle. So let's say you have a number m into which you have to divide the area. Well, you can actually think about this as a practical problem. I mean, if you have some triangular piece of land which you would like to divide among I don't know, five people in such a way that the area would be the same so they can I don't know, grow something um, on, on this area, okay? So how to divide it evenly? <clears throat> so the, the area, I mean, evenly in terms of area. Well. Let's think about it. If you have n, then this piece is 1 n, this piece is 1 n, this piece is 1 n, and this piece is 1 n, right? So if this is um, a1, this is a2, this is a3, uh, so a1 cuts the piece which is equal to 1 n of the area, right? a2, if you count it, if you measure it from the top, A2 measures 2 times 1n, right? A3 measures a triangle which is 
three times uh, one end of the original. So basically, what I'm saying is that the position of the point AK is such that it measures K nth of area of original triangle, right? The point A A1 measures a triangle which is 1 nth. Point A2 cuts a triangle which has an area of 2 nths, etc. So point AK cuts the piece. Now, we know the original triangle, which means we know all elements, including the sides, etc., right? Now, we know that the area of the triangle which is cut by the point AK is such and such. Therefore, from, from one of the previous problem, number four, if you have similar triangles, their areas are proportional to squares of their sides, right? So, the area of, let's call it case, case triangle. Case triangle is triangle which is cut by the point A case, A case divided by the area of original triangle as let's call this point X, and this is point A, as X A K square divided by X A. All right, I hope that that's obvious, right? This is the side of the triangle which is cut by the line, and this is the side of the original triangle. And we were saying that since areas are uh, proportional to the squares of the sides, which is the problem number four, I can write this equation. Now, this is what I am given. This is k over n. So the areas are supposed to be related as k over n. So in this particular uh, equation, x, x, a, k squared divided by x, a is equal to k over n. I don't know, uh, sorry, square. I got it, I'm sorry. Um, I basically have x, a, I have k, I have n, and all I have to find is x, a. Now, obviously from this, I can say that x, a, k is over x a is equal to square root of k over square root of n. We know how to calculate, how to construct these two. So this is just the force proportional if you have three other um, pieces. And, and that's the solution. So in any case, all you need to do is for each k from 1 to n minus 1, you have to find uh, this particular, you have to construct square root of k as a, as a construction problem, which we know how to do it. I explained in the, in the beginning. Same thing with square root, with, with, uh, square root of n. And then fi find the, the force proportional, which satisfies this particular uh, proportionality, which we also know how to do it from the similarity of triangles. Well, that's it. Uh, I hope everything was uh, well understood, and uh, I, I do recommend you to go again through these problems. Um, do not forget these little techniques, like for instance, if you have, uh, for instance, square root of five, how to construct a, uh, a segment which has the length of square root of five, for instance, or square root of any number, uh, using again, the unit lengths, etc. Uh, how to construct uh, the proportionality, x over a is equal to b over c, for instance, where x is unknown and a, b, c are unknown. So these are techniques which you probably have to remember, and uh, they should be you know, in your uh, repertoire of the techniques which you know. So please go again through these pro pro problems by yourself. 
uh, by all means, you are invited to listen to the lecture again. And, um, and again, don't forget that Unizor is a relatively comprehensive course for advanced mathematics, and I do encourage you to basically go through the whole course as, as, as a registered student, uh, um, have somebody supervise your process, somebody to uh, enroll you, or actually you can you know enroll yourself if, if you can register as a as both student as a, and the supervisor go through the exams exams are very important well that's it for today thank you very much